Glory to God. Last uh, week uh, started a, a message um, uh, called uh, Divine GPS. And if you know anything about GPS, it means Global Positioning System. Um, but I'm going to uh, just rename it to God Positioning System. And uh, so uh, we all desire to be uh, wherever it is that God wants us to be, don't we all? Amen. Yeah, y'all are welcome to go, well, ha, ha, you know, make some noise. Say amen. Um, but anyway, so we want to know where God wants us to be at any given time. Isn't that right? It would be the best place to be because, I mean, after all, uh, God's thoughts towards us are what? They're good. And, and they're, they are to give us an expected end. He has some amazing crescendo for our life. He has a purpose, a plan um, that he has devised before the foundation of the world. He planned this out. Um, and Ephesians 2.10 says that we are his workmanship, uh, created in Christ Jesus, right, unto good works. Uh, the Amplified takes that and blows it up as it does and says that we are uh, taking those paths that he prearranged for us to walk in. He prearranged for us to walk in those. And uh, so apparently God has this amazing plan of which uh, the only thing that we have to do in order to fulfill that is to desire it and walk in it. Isn't that right? And uh, keep our uh, speakers on. You know what I'm saying? Can you hear me now type of thing. And uh, so God is speaking to us uh, through his Holy Spirit. He, um, Jesus uh, said, I must go um, and I will send another. And when he said another, that would mean someone just like himself. Isn't that right, you guys? And so Jesus is saying, uh, he said things like, he who has seen me has seen the Father, right? And, and uh, he said, I and my Father are one. Uh, but then he says, I must go and send another. That means uh, that the Holy Spirit has to be uh, in connection with the Father and the Son or else he wouldn't have said another. Um, and so that another is, who's, is the dispensation that we're living in. And that's who we have as the uh, comforter or the helper, as translated um, Greek uh, paraclete, which means one called alongside to help us. And we actually have the ability to be filled with him uh, so that out, out of the inside of us flows these rivers. I like it's rivers in plural, you know, and not just a trickle stream, but rivers. I mean, I'd like to believe that it's, it's provision, it's whatever you need, wisdom, resources, all that you need come from these rivers if we would uh, just spend just a little bit of time being filled with the Holy Ghost. People will argue about drinking, you know, drinking wine or alcohol and that kind of thing, I'd like to argue with you about getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Ephesians uh, says this, it says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so we need to be uh, about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, of course, um, as we saw last week, is going to show us some things. And I uh, want to just do a quick uh, review really quick. I'll, well, well, that's yet to be seen how quick it is. Uh, but anyways, in John 16, 13, Jesus used the illustration uh, about the Holy Ghost. He said, he will show you things to come. We found out that the word show is the Greek word odegeo. Um, it's a guide or uh, a person uh, who is being guided, if you will. And uh, so apparently this path that, we, that he prearranged uh, must have needed a guide. You all understand? Yes. Otherwise, why would he send one? And why would he tell the uh, mighty disciples, the apostles rather, why would he tell the mighty apostles, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait there. Now, understand that the, the disciples or the apostles, they had already done some stuff. Isn't that right? He had sent them out, and they did miracle signs and wonders. Remember that? They came back to Jesus, and they said, even the demons obey us. And Jesus was like, you're kidding me. No, he didn't say that. All he said was, yeah, yeah, I, I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Like, you know, that's what it looked, he looked like. And so they're saying, wow, this is what happened. And, and so they had done some exploits, is my point. I don't want to spend too much time there. And yet Jesus didn't say, yeah, go do that some more. I'm taking off. Go ahead and do that and hang out until the Holy Spirit comes. He said, no, you go there and you wait there. Wait there until you be endued with power from on high. Uh, because you shall receive power after that. Yeah. 
When shall you receive power? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then when that happens, then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. You know, you can say, we could say in, you know, uh, you know, the northwest area of Las Vegas, Las Vegas, unto Nevada, unto uh, United States of America, and the world. If we brought it into our language, isn't that right? When we get endued with power, there's something that goes boom, boom, you know? And you start to affect everything around you. But until you be endued with power, it would seem like you're not quite as effective at the very least. Isn't that right? So we needed a divine guide. Otherwise, we're wandering around making up stuff. And we've seen men, you know, alleged men of God do that. And you know, they, <laughs> why would we know that it's not right? Well, it, because the book, the Holy Ghost will never defy the book. Jesus said he's going to take that which is of mine and he's going to show it to you. And then he said, the reason why I say that he's going to take that which is mine and show it to you is because everything the Father has, he gave to me. Now, now think about what I just said. The Holy Ghost is going to take that which is mine and show it unto you. Woo! So the Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth. And you spend some time with the Holy Ghost, he's going to take you to the Word. He's going to show you the Word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you start seeing things come alive in that great book. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Woo-wee. And uh, we had shared last week um, that Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. This is our stamp. This is our qualifier. This is how they know that we are sons and children of God is because we are being led by the Holy Ghost in what we do. Our steps are ordered of the Lord. But apparently, if we don't have the the light and the lamp showing us, then we could step out of the right trail. And I shared um, a scripture with you that I shared with the youth that talked about the road signs in Psalm. That he's going to show us the road signs. Bridge out, cliff ahead, turn here to get where you need to go. I mean, there's very, very basic things, of course, the Word of God provides for us, but you wouldn't know it by by looking at many Christians because they have left the very basic freeway God has created through the Word of the living God. His Word is a lamp and a light, isn't that right, to our path? And so we have this freeway, but yet people argue about that and want to take a dirt road or even no road. And argue with uh, with you about uh, why will we have to take the freeway? How about it's easier? I promise you, you get on I-15, you can get to L.A. faster than taking the desert. And we get the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit shows us how to stay there, how to lock in and not be diverted, how not to be distracted. Praise the Lord. He even will tell you, get off and get some gas. You need gas. You need to get some gas. Oh, all right. Is that what the red line means? (laughs) Or yellow or whatever it is. (laughs) And we get the help that we need. Amen. And refreshed. Holy Spirit knows everything. Praise God. And that word, you know, as many as are led, I mentioned, uh, is the word ago, which um, is uh, like having a rope around uh, an animal's neck and you gently uh, lead that animal. There's no violent leading of the Holy Ghost. There is a cooperation on our part. He is gentle. And that's why the scriptures say, do not grieve the Holy Ghost. But keep in step with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Pretty easy. It it can't be hard. Right? The only thing that would be hard about leading an animal, you know, my wife walks our our dog in the morning and... and, uh, and man, he, he just wants to do some stuff. If he sees something, he wants to, you know, uh, to mark. You know what I'm saying? It's a boy dog. Yeah, he, he wants to 
make sure the neighbors all know this is his neighborhood, you know. So he'll, he'll and, and, and it's pretty common, right? He just kind of wants to hit that bush. This is his bush. He has to hit that bush. But yet she may be walking on the other side of the road and be like, oh, my goodness. And, but he doesn't know there's a car coming. And thank God for the leash, right? Yeah. Now, now um, uh, my dog's pretty obedient, just to be honest, because just last night, he, I was out there doing something, and he was getting ready to rip over there because he wanted to do his thing, you know. And uh, the car was coming. I said, Max! And he went. <laughs> Has anybody have, had the Holy Ghost do that to you? <laughs> Andy! <laughs> you know? You might be in position already, you know. Oh, never mind. You know, just <laughs> stop. You're like, you got that look on your face. And he's helping you. He's like, mm -mm -mm. yes, sir. Let me get back over on this side of the road then. Get with mama. <laughs> Holy Spirit's here to help us. He really really, really is helping us. That's right, amen. Praise God. We wake up every day. Say, good morning, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, that my steps are ordered of the Lord. Hallelujah. That I am not just wandering around on my own, doing my own thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I respond to the tugs and pull of the Holy Ghost. I'd like to believe I got a leash. <laughs> I'm thankful for a leash. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I spent a certain period of my life unleashed. Maybe there's a couple of you in here who wasn't saved all your life. Oh my goodness, that didn't go well. But I was sure thankful when God pulled me over. Hallelujah. And showed me his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word led is the Greek word to go, which is the picture of someone gently leading someone else. The me, uh, this means the Spirit will lead us, but we must extend our hearts and hands to Him first. For without our cooperation, He cannot guide us anywhere. Hallelujah. God did not create uh, robots and clones. This is a whosoever will. Right? Our will is involved in this each and every day. You can decide to or decide not to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, there are, there's different programs that we've created to try and help people get to the point of, of yielding and uh, submitting to. Um, uh, in, the, in the older world, um, uh, my family believed in corporal punishment. My mom, um, she imparted some amazing wisdom to my life that uh, I did not want to cross my mom. No, I had. I, my dad was in my life when I was younger, and we all knew that you didn't want dad to get involved because of the velocity of the swing. Does that make sense? But what happened was when, when um, parents do their job in a child's life, then they give them the ability to control themselves. And they give them the knowledge and understanding that there are repercussions and punishment for not doing the right things. And we're living in a very uh, interesting day when people have tried to blurry all the lines and make everything okay. There is not right. There is not wrong. But listen, Holy Spirit is exactly doing this. He's leading us into the truth. And the truth of the matter is, is if you jump off of a tall cliff, you will hurt yourself. 
And if you jump off the roof of our building, you will hurt yourself. The law of gravity kicks in. Isn't that right? Holy Spirit shows us truth. And if we don't act on that truth, we cannot be- believe that God led us into stupid. We ran out into stupid. Leaving the tracks, leaving the purpose of God, leaving the plan of God. Holy Spirit did not direct you that way. In fact, if you'd be honest, you'd know Holy Spirit tried to help you. And this is in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Finances, relationships, jobs, everything. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Philippians 2.13 It says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. New Living Translation says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He's working in you. You end up defying your own heart in order to do the wrong. In order to do the dirty deed, you would have to defy your own heart in his direction. The Amplified Bible says this in the uh, Philippians 2, 12 and 13 through 13. It says, therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out, cultivate, carry out the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling self-distrust with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Holy Spirit's helping you, my friend. He is helping you. God is helping you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get in the presence of the wrong relationships, something happens in here. Something begins to speak to you about that relationship or that person. (coughs) Praise God. And so uh, we know that this is not going to be the person I marry, right? Let alone date or any other thing, right? Because the Holy Spirit helped you. We could line up a bunch of people from our church that would tell you that's exactly right, right there. I defied that, and I married them, and I'm here to tell you that was not a good idea. (laughs) Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when people make bad decisions. It takes two people to make a marriage and one to break it, okay? So I'm not saying it's 100%. I'm just saying you could save yourself a whole lot of trouble by listening to the direction of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's helping us. Amen. He's helping you in both directions. He's helping you overcome the fear that you have because a lot of times people are held in bondage by fear when God wants you to find that person, that wonderful person, and you think that you, if you stay home in your bedroom that you're going to find that person. That's not the way it works. If I just stay here, then, then I won't get hurt. Listen. Oh, Lord. I don't know if I should go down that road. But anyways, Holy Spirit can help you find the right person. And he'll help you to overcome the fears. And and listen, if you don't have a little bit of concern about that relationship that you're going to spend forever with, then you really need to have a little bit of concern because it's serious business. I mean, I cried at the altar. Caitlin was down there, you know, can we get this over with? This dress is hot. Pastor, <laughs> me, I'm up there just crying. I was like, <laughs> she's so gorgeous. <laughs> I'm still going to spend the rest of my life with her. <laughs> God help me. And so, so believing not in myself, but believing in the grace of God, Amen. that it was the will of God and the plan of God. I went forward, and, and God has sustained us and kept us, 
And you know for a fact that it ain't been perfect because I've put it pretty much all out there. You know what I'm saying? That we have had trouble, as does everyone. And the Holy Spirit helped you with that. He helped you with it all. He is our helper. And we need a helper. We need a guide. Glory to God. And he sure does help us. Praise God. Every time we do the wrong thing, he tells us, and we're able to say, Father, forgive me, and then go to that person and say, Honey, forgive me. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it at all, and I certainly shouldn't have said it that way. Has anybody ever had to say that to your wife, to your husband? Yeah? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ah, the three people that are still married. <laughs> That's great. The rest, the rest of y'all are like, I didn't say it. <laughs> He's evil, and I wasn't going to tell him that. It's like, all righty then. <laughs> Dear Jesus, that's great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So, so in talking about um, uh, the God positioning system or divine GPS, uh, then we must actually uh, consider also uh, what kind of being we are and how God actually leads us, if you will. And uh, so quickly, I would like to uh, uh, look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23 really fast, if we can do this, um, and talk about, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, the part of our being that God directs, the part of our being that God is communicating with, is our spirit man. Uh, man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. We see here in Thessalonians, there were three different parts of our being that God could preserve blameless. Isn't that right? Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is what you are. That's the part of you that got born again. That's the part of you that gets to uh, roll out of here when Jesus comes, right? And that's the part of you that got born again. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. So apparently the man or the human being that gets born again is the spirit man. He's calling that the man. Do you understand? In the spirit there is neither male, male nor female, so understand that I'm talking about all of us. That you are a spirit, you have a soul, you, and you live in a body. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And your soul and your spirit are, are so interlocked, it's very difficult to tell the difference between what is mental and what is spiritual. But the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it divides the difference. So you can tell what is just your emotions. Oh, I love him. He's the best. I'm so in love with him. I'm like, you're 12 years old. <laughs> anyway, so, so we, we have the word of God to divide the difference between what is mental and what is spiritual and what is solical and what is spiritual. Man is a spirit, has a soul, and he lives in a body. So uh, the part of us that um, communes with God is our spirit man, okay? Uh, I just quoted Hebrews 4.12, uh, talking about the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit. It actually goes through uh, the parts of your being. Soul and spirit, dividing soul and spirit, spirit, joints and marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You draw a line down the middle, and this is the um, soul, mind, right, thoughts, and this is the spirit side. You all get it? And so the word goes, and you go, aha, I'm able to see the difference. Praise God. I would like to eat the whole cake, but my spirit is telling me differently. You will die a terrible death. And have a horrible stomach ache tonight at the very least. You know, so, so, so you have um, a help, you know. Obviously, your body's involved in that conversation, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. I'm trying to rip through some of this, get some scriptures out. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, 
searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now listen, God's not interested in where you process your food in this verse. You understand? He's not searching for what you had for lunch today. He's uh, looking into the heart of the man. Isn't that right? This is where we commune with God. Isn't that right? New Living Translation says, The Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. So it's, it's, it's the Lord lighting up our inner man, and he sees all those things about us. We can't hide anything from him. Isn't that right? And this is the part of us that communes with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and incidentally, if you're taking notes, John 4, 21 through 24 is, is where I quoted uh, Jesus' interaction with the woman. Um, and and uh, so, so Jesus is talking to her, and he's saying that, uh, that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth because that's who he's looking for. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen to the contemporary English version of verse 24. It says, God is spirit, and those who worship God must be led by the spirit to worship him according to the truth. I really like that rendition. Isn't that good? And so, so we worship God here in this house. We worship him uh, with our uplifted hands in English because uh, most of us are speaking English. And, and so we worship him in that way or Spanish. But we, that's your understanding, correct? Right? Uh, but then we go over worshiping him in the spirit. You know, some of you may not be so familiar with that, but man, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Spirit taking us over. A whole nother way to worship. Ah, woo! Glory to God. I mean, you're just English. It just seems like you, it's, uh, English takes you right to the edge of the cliff. But you go in the Holy Spirit and it just feels like you go, I'm hang glide. Woo! released. I've gone to meetings where, where they weren't aware of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they worshiped, man, they worshiped us right to the edge, and, and all of us, we were used to leaving the cliff behind and jumping off the mountain. <laughs> and we're just like, oh, and they're like, okay, you may be seated. We're like, whoa. <laughs> we were ready. <laughs> and they just, they weren't aware of that. So we're grateful for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And being able to worship in the spirit. Paul said, he said, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Um, and, and he said, but my mind is unfruitful. He said, what should I do about that? He said, well, I will worship with my understanding and I will worship in the spirit also. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're grateful for this dynamic of, of being able to worship God in the spirit. And don't get me wrong, we love also worshiping in truth as well. It's, it's wonderful to sing about the goodness of God and the facts and the realities of God and, and to become more uh, uh, aware of them because it's a worship to Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Incidentally, worship is the highest kind of prayer. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. A major part of prayer, by the way, is listening, just so you know. And you cannot talk about a GPS without having some listening involved. Praise the Lord. Getting ahead of myself. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the Lord Jesus. So in John 14, John 14, verses 15 through 17. This is the New Living Translation, by the way. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. When will he leave us? When is that? <laughs> so there's not like a, a vacation day for the Holy Ghost? or No? So, so the Holy Spirit must not be union? He don't take breaks? No, the Holy Spirit, he's, he's on, on point all the time, right? He's there, ready, available at all times. Verse 17, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him. Everybody say, I know him. 
It says, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Woo, and that's where he is today. How many can say he's in me? Woo-wee. And this Holy Spirit is on point, on target, ready, available at any given time when you decide that, wait, 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 why am I struggling with this? Let me go to him. Why do we keep on relearning this? That we struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled and fought and, tr- and yet realized all of a sudden a light comes on. But why am I doing this? Now, this is, sounds very simple, but misplacing your keys, misplacing your phone, misplacing whatever it is you've misplaced. I will look and 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 be frustrated. Go days. Days. And then go. A little embarrassed. But I thought I could find him. I I thought I could do it. It said, Lord, can you help me find my keys? They're in the top pocket of my backpack. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And you just feel stupid. (laughs) He's there, always ready. It's almost like he's like, are you done? (laughs) I'm done. Isn't that funny how we just, the like little kids, I do it, I do it. Has anybody ever met anybody like that? How many of you are married to one? <laughs> I do it, I do it. Okay. You take care of yourself. I do it. Okay. Holy Spirit will help us if we'll let him. And that's just the key, is we have to let him. He'll help you with every aspect of your marriage. Those three that were still married. Every aspect of your marriage, (laughs) he'll help you. He'll help you find the one to marry, and he can help you stay married. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Divine guidance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise him. (laughs) Praise Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Um, in uh, Romans 8, 16, we read 14, 8, 14, of, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But in 8, 16, it says, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, this is an interesting dynamic. This means that he is in direct communication with your spirit. As I had mentioned, you are a spirit. This is the area of your being of which he communicates And uh, in the Amplified Classic, it says, The Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. Johnson says, By uniting with our own spirit, this spirit confirms that we are God's children. The Spirit himself, in letters, the Spirit himself whispers deep inside us that we really are kids in in the family, in the Father's family. Praise God. And uh, Philip's translation says, the Spirit himself endorses our inward conviction. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is right there. Praise God. Moving, uh, directing, confirming. I I find myself in positions and places uh, that it's interesting that you know God put me here. God put me here. I don't know about you guys. I believe for opportunities to share the gospel. And it's getting so, it's more frequent. People, it's getting easier and easier, believe it or not. People are afraid. People are afraid, you guys. We have the answer. And Holy Spirit, I'm I'm waking up and saying, Lord, give me somebody. Give me souls today. Show me who needs you. And the Holy Spirit brings them to me. At the gym, uh, Mike Uh, We were working out together, Mike and and Jessica, you know, uh, hitting abs, which everybody loves. Praise God. And so apparently, (laughs) shaking his head, oh no. But anyhow, so so this this young lady is watching like, 
wow, that's pretty serious what those people are doing. So she thinks, I need to talk to them about the seriousness of the matter that they're doing. Mike cuts to the chase and starts inviting her to church. Isn't that right, Mike? Just tell me yes. Just, I'm going to give you that. All right, praise God. So Mike uh, drags the young lady over to me. And we talked to her for a while. I don't know. Holy Spirit says, ask her if she knows the Lord. I did. We prayed with her to receive Christ right there. She came this morning to church, went to, came to the altar. They t- drug her to the back and just got everything. She just got the whole thing. Glory to God. Isn't that amazing? We got folks that are coming from all different walks of life. We were, we were doing fasting and prayer. Thank you so much for those of you who participated in fasting and prayer this week. And thank you for those of you who pray every week on Tuesdays and in the prayer room before services. It is of necessity. It is mandatory. We are grateful and thankful. But we were over there, started uh, fasting and prayer. There's a fellow we ain't never seen. He comes in and uh, just getting ready to start. And I said, hey, how you doing? Met, met him. Uh, do you know Jesus? No, I do not. Would you like to know him? Yes, I would. We get him saved. We start prayer. Glory to God. He comes over to CR and comes back over there and says, I'm going to come back. All right. Praise God. Great. If I told you the story, it would freak you out. But anyhow, so God brings people in. They're coming in. This guy was clear from California. And God helped him. Holy Spirit, man, I'm telling you, what an exciting adventure to listen to the Holy Ghost and do what the Holy Ghost tells us to do. Finding ourselves in strategic places all the time by the Holy Ghost. And you got to know when the Holy Ghost is with you, some crazy stuff could happen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We get to start getting ourselves uh, connected and listening and expecting and anticipating the moving of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, because stuff will happen. Praise the Lord. We prayed for somebody, and, and the, a demon started manifesting. Now, that isn't necessarily what we want to have in church, right? Yeah, but that's what we are. We help people deliver people. So you can't be running off or scared when demons start manifesting. Glory to God. We have authority over them. So one of our brothers prayed for somebody, and they started uh, spewing out foul things, you know, and, and uh, we just dealt with that in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, they, I mean, the whole business, you know, on the floor and weird stuff going on. We're like, ha, 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 ha. No. <laughs> right? Because why? We have authority over them. People have come. How many of you came to church with demon passengers? Huh? And God delivered you and helped you and taught you how to not ever have them mount you ever again. So exciting. So exciting. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in this day and this hour. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Praise the Lord. I'm really out of time. I, have, I, I, I keep just touching these notes. It's okay. I believe the Holy Spirit says what he wants to say to give you the help that you need to have. And maybe I'll be able to pick this up some other day. Uh, but regardless, anticipate. Anticipate the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. And listen to what he has to say. He's going to direct you into the word of God. He's going to show you things in the word. Uh, As you spend time in the word, as you spend time praying, uh, whether English or in other tongues, uh, listen, give time to listen for his direction. Because it is uh, as much a part of prayer listening as is speaking. Praise God. Worship in English and in other tongues, Spanish, whatever. Worship in your known language. Uh, Get into a place uh, where you are sensitive on the inside in your spirit. And then approach the word of God humbly. And expect God to talk to you because he wants to and he will. Holy Spirit will start opening stuff up. Praise God. Don't you love the word? Oh, the word is so good. It's like honey 
even the honeycomb. Why would it say that? If you knew naturally all of the healing benefits of the honeycomb, it's just an illustration of how valuable and precious God's word is. Who sweeter than honey. Woo. More precious than silver and gold. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I share one more scripture, Pastor? Is that okay? I want to go to Joshua 1 8 really quick here. In Joshua 1 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Um, I want to say to you, this is, does include finances and resources, but is not limited to that. So in every way, you prosper. I prosper in my marriage. I prosper in my children. I prosper. Uh, everything that I set my hand to do does prosper. Amen. Glory to God. Because I have, what? Spent the time meditating, 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 giving myself over. And in so doing, you give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Yes. Holy Spirit brings that up. Words, scriptures will come up. And I'll just start speaking them as the Holy Spirit brings them up. Even songs, you know, our songs are filled with the word of God. Sometime a song will rise in my heart and I will sing that song. I believe I'm singing the song of victory for the day. I'm singing something into the day when I arise. Or maybe even in the night or even in the noonday. But whenever it comes, you yield to that. The Holy Spirit's leading. Speak that and declare that because God is helping you. Why? Because he's given you the helper, the Holy Spirit. 